Good day, mate. Newcastle United 4, Tottenham Hotspur 0, and this is the last word. Yes, what a glorious day on Tain saved. 4 0, got Carl, got Lee. We're here for the last word. Get in the comments what was the best bit about today. Who was your man of the match? And how good is it supporting Newcastle United right now? We are temporarily as we film six in the Premier League. We'll touch more about that later on. But Carl, team news. We were guessing. We were thinking what's going to happen. No Joe Willick, Tino, Lewis Hall. Well, one of them's going to start. Neither of them started. And it was very, very interesting. Was it tactically Eddie Howe's best bit of tactical work at Newcastle for a game of this calibre? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd... It has to be because you know there, there were definitely options that he could have gone with because we saw Livermento come on. Could he have played the first 45 minutes potentially? But um, it, like you say, we were all looking at the, the team sheet, thinking, well, how is it? What is it? Five at the back, three at the back, four at the back. <laughs> I didn't really understand what was going on. Was Emil Kraft playing left back? Was he? So it, it worked out really, really well. Um, worried about Kraft and Murphy being at the back full stop, um, but after the first 15 minutes, they were. Exceptional. From the Tottenham side of things, it was as strong as you got. They did make a couple of changes. Benton Kerr came in. Um, but they are a strong outfit, let's be honest. Like Newcastle played extraordinarily well, but it's still a strong outfit. Who, before the game, were the, one, the ones that you think, and oh, I hope they don't play well this afternoon? Yeah, we all did the previews this week, didn't we, on a couple of Spurs channels. And we're all like, oh, we'll take a point because of the injuries that we've gotten. The comparison, obviously, Spurs have had years to build their squad. We've only had really since the takeover. Um, we can't even spend all that money, but you look at that Spurs side, and yes, I know they've lost Harry Kane, but look, Ange Postacoglu has done a great job. It's between them and Villa. Uh, thank you, Villa, by the way, if you're watching. Uh, do us a favour sometime in the season, but it's happened again, Johnny. It's, it's happened, happened again. again. Tottenham Hotspur, it's, it's happened, happened again. again. I don't know what it is. We're playing Spurs at the minute, but uh, at home, can we play them every week? It'd be great, but... Yeah. That was all. I didn't expect that, to be honest. No, I don't think anybody did. I'll, I'll stay with you, Lee, just for the first bit of the game. Timo Werner had probably Spurs' first real chance of the game. Yeah, but he cool. Yeah, he was a bit of a threat, and you could see Jacob Murphy. He was probably one of the big discussions through the week, how we're going to stop Werner or limit his opportunities. And Murphy and Kraft were given that responsibility, if you like. But that was kind of the, the best that Spurs really had in that first half. You know, Dubravka wasn't really tested. And Newcastle, slowly but surely, were getting into the game. And that first goal was absolutely massive. And it was great work from Anthony Gordon in particular. We were thinking about the camera there. It's still, it's still going. It's still going. And um, yeah, but Anthony Gordon, an absolute menace on Yves Basuma, plays in Alexander Izak, twists and turns, and Mickey van der Ven's on his backside. And Alexander Izak makes it 1 0. So it just moved ever so slightly, but the main question was, Lee, is Alexander Izak world-class? So define world-class first. Who's, who's well, Haaland's world-class in that position. Harry Kane is world-class in that position. Is he that level yet, or is he still not that level? What do you think? Put Haaland in this side, how many goals does he score? I don't know. Haaland, Haaland is lethal in, in the box, but he's not a better footballer than Izak. Izak's the better footballer. For Isaac to be classed as world world class, I think you need to bag 30 consistently and probably stay away from injuries. Maybe that's been harsh, but I think he's just in that next bracket underneath. And by God, without him, Gordon and Bruno, this side goes down. The, 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 the quality just isn't there. Those three players, week in, week out at the moment, are performing for Newcastle. And it's not the first time we've seen Isaac cut in and score that type of goal. That's now starting to become a custom because he's so good with his ball that his movement. Great finish, 1-0 up, good start. Great start. And Carl, you're thinking at that point at 1-0. <laughs> right. It'd be lovely to get a second. It'd be lovely to get a second. Do you know what? I can see Mickey on the back of a Newcastle shirt. Mickey van der Ven gets mentioned once again for a Newcastle United goal, doesn't he? Because, look, Anthony Gordon should not be given that space from that mistake for Mickey van der Ven who puts it basically on a play for Anthony Gordon, twists and turns the only Spurs defender that was back there and smashes it in to make it 2-0. Completely changed the game, those two goals in two minutes. Uh, it was absolutely unbelievable. I'd, like you say, Tottenham Hotspur, it's happening again. Two goals within, what, 30 seconds, I think it was. Um, yeah, and as soon as he's made that mistake, I just had a feeling that Anthony Gordon was going to capitalise because everything that kid touches turns to gold at the moment. He was, again... Huge driving force in us going forward, as always. Just 
and I, I, I was cheering that much I genuinely nearly passed out because I just couldn't believe that we'd scored again and I thought fuck me, it's going to end up six again it's going to end up six um, yeah it's uh, just capitalising on, on mistakes and being as clinical as we need to be something we've probably not been throughout the season it was really good to see saw some of the shit hours really that we've missed as well it was just an all round good performance and huge confidence boosters to go and drive on for European football it really was and look you, it could have been anything Newcastle wanted to be for the uh, rest of that first half like Dan Byrne had a header um, Isaac well. was played through by Anderson Barnes was linking up well Newcastle was just going attack after attack after attack it did generally remind you of last season but that is the best type of football for Newcastle United. Front foot, a bit like it was almost like last season. That you know, pressing from the front, not giving any defenders any chance to breathe. That's what we want to see on a weekly basis. Class, man. I don't know what calls because I can't hear because of the wind. Uh, what calls said, but that goal, you're most vulnerable when you're conceded, and that was an awful error from Spurs. We capitalised on it, but it wasn't just stop. That was Johnny. You see, it was relentless. It was non-stop. It's like. Eh, am I watching the same Newcastle side that we're all praying for a point yeah, with all these injuries and Lewis Hall being, you know, hasn't trained all week and Tino Livermore only just come being declared fit yesterday and it's like unbelievable that we're just peppering them. It's like they're the Champions League team or so-called trying to get into the Champions League. We're a team that's hovering between seventh and tenth most weeks. It was polar opposite the days. We absolutely battered them and what a performance first half. Tactically, that is the best performance. The first hour probably. I've seen this season just to outsmart Ange because he's built up as oh what a great guy what a great manager what a great motivator man man management and he's getting the best out of these Spurs players Eddie House has taught him a lesson he did 100% at half time Carl you're thinking perfect that's just just basically more of the same can we get onto the front foot early on but we did sit back a little bit but it actually came into the fact that Newcastle scored the third goal and we talk about Alexander Ezek we talk about Anthony Gordon but there's a little man in the midfield called Bruno Guimaraes who can only, he's the only one that maybe Fabian Scher to an extent as well can pl play that sort of pass. And as soon as he makes that pass and Isaac has obviously got that knowledge of that understanding and the partnership between the pair of them, it is just so good to see. And again, Van der Ven's chase and chase and chase and he's not catching Alexander Isaac. And when Alexander Isaac is in the box one-on-one -on -one and nobody's around him, it is a goal. And that was game setting match at that point. Yeah, I, th I think we were sat there to be fair. And like Lee's mentioned there, we've been yo-yo um, in between 7th and 10th and 11th and it was one of them like a few weeks ago if we were playing them I would have even in, going in at 2-0 up I would have thought oh we're quite vulnerable we have to get the third goal I just didn't feel like that today like you said we were so relentless I wasn't worried I thought that third goal is going to come we usually score going towards the Gallagher and we're not usually 2-0 up by this point and if we are I think we'd be pretty comfortable like you said Bruno's got more than enough capability to pull out disgusting balls like that um, and as soon as that ball come over to Isak realising how far he was in front uh, just bet your house on him scoring mate bet your house. with all of that space to run into there was no way that he was, wasn't going to score um, he could have had four or five today to be yeah. fair there was an opportunity in the first half where it lovely balls come over and he's just got away from him. but had you brought it down mid-air first touch again his position is absolutely unbelievable unbelievable makes Bruno's job even easier yeah certainly um, Lee one thing I will say at 3-0 that was probably the best I've seen of a Newcastle United every time their goalkeeper had it he was playing it short to either the left centre back or the right centre back and we were making them cause the high errors press. and the high press was absolutely outstanding yeah. for Newcastle United but it wasn't just the front three it was the midfield three the defence pushed up as Even well Dan Byrne at some points yeah it Dan. was amazing and that's what you want to say don't you yeah because it forces them into quick play and quick play can force errors that's why the whole idea of the high press is there but um, that goal by the way I just want to say that ball by Bruno was sensational by yeah. the way it was oh beautiful yeah. Carl would have had a great view being front row yeah. um, oh beautiful beautiful but yeah, you, you think naturally, eventually, because I think a 2 0, with that next goal, whoever scores it is crucial. We got it, and 3 0 gives you that cushion. And obviously, naturally, Spurs are going to come at you, but Dubravka was barely think, barely tested, man. I think and, I counted two, two shots that Dubravka had to deal with. One was straight on, but he made quite a bit of a meal of it, but the second was right at the end. Oh, yeah, straight on, man. Yeah. I was a bit worried there, but the high pressing was great, and obviously, natural. The subs started to slow the game down a bit, and Madison got a uh, bit of a. Uh, a taste of his old medicine, pleading with the referee. He's first a bit half. greedy, isn't he? Yeah, that was the chant, and obviously pleading with the referee to give a yellow card in the first half, and Newcastle fans didn't like that. But um, yeah, great, great, unbelievable at the end. And 
And then naturally the second half kind of phases out, but the first hour, tactically, that's the best this season, without a shadow of a doubt. And I'll put that above Paris. That was, yeah, that, I, w I want to speak to you before we talk about the fourth goal with Lee. I want to speak to you about the defence. Emil Kraft, Dan Byrne, Fabian Scher in particular, because it'll link well with Fabian Scher's goal. How solid were they today? And nothing went past them. And to almost end the question, Dan Byrne has to stay as a centre-half for me. Yeah. He's so much more comfortable. He reads the game even better as a centre-half. And I know he's a natural centre-half. Keep him there. I 100% agree. The concern was, and it was there to be seen in the first half, um, there wasn't enough communication between Kraft, Dubravka and, um, and Jacob Murphy. So we're kind of... You know, I, completely off on a tangent but I think today would have been a perfect game for Jamal Lascelles in terms of his communication because I do think we lack that a little bit but obviously that changed after about 15 to 20 minutes um, as I mentioned there was Timo Werner had bags of space bags of space and James Madison was afforded a, enough space in the middle but top Spurs didn't exploit it um, and is that a testament to Dan Byrne probably because he was obviously very commanding at the back today and I absolutely agree with you mate like I said before the game I said we're getting a clean sheet today I don't and I don't know why, I just had, the, had a feeling that we were and they were absolutely fantastic. Look, we made, we made mistakes to give Spurs an opportunity to score, but still, um, you know, even the likes of Elliot Anderson mopping up, sweeping as well when need to. Everyone just fought for each other today. It was really good to see. Look, everyone needs a Fabian share, Lee Lawler. And I love him. You do love him. And it was like in slow motion, that was. I was like, I know it's going in, but I'm going to wait to cheer till it hits the back of the net. And the corner from Anthony Gordon, two assists for Anthony Gordon today. We'll talk about man of the match in the second bit of the last word. But a lovely cross and Fabian Shea gets a free header and makes it 4-0. The celebrator in the strawberry corner. Everyone's going potty. Tottenham Hotspur, it's happened again. Cheerio, cheerio, cheerio. Just before that, Yuzak was having a bit of aftas, wasn't he? With that corner. And the venue. Yeah, having a bit of aftas and a bit of pushing going on. And so, so much sweeter. So much sweeter. Just beautiful to see how he gets on the end of it. To be fair, that, was the close, that was the closest Van der Ven got to Yuzak all day. Yeah. <laughs> And I, he's he's talked about being this great uh, defender, uh, the quickest in the league and what have you, and absolutely brilliant bullet header from Fabian Shea. But yeah, there were signs already though that Spurs will allow us to have yeah. those type of headers, and one will eventually be pe penalised and punished. And we did, and Fabian Shea was, should have probably got a goal last week, but he's got a knack of scoring four or five this season. His best return. Ah, uh, oh, you know what I feel about Fabian Shea. I absolutely love him defensively. I think he's improved his game so much. I think he's come on leaps and bounds since Eddie Howe's come in. Yeah. And 4-0, um, and it's just, it's just enjoying the afternoon, and the sun's out, and it's, it's an early kick-off. We can go home and have a few beers and enjoy the weekend, and champion, brilliant. Champion it was. Can we talk about Emil Craft in the post, by the way? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Emil Craft in the post. <laughs> Half volley into the ground, bounce, loops up. I thought, fucking going in, just clipped off the outside of the post. Now that would have been a cherry on top of the cake, but do you know what? Four was absolutely fine. It finished Newcastle United four, Tottenham Hotspur nil. Eddie Howe deserves so much credit, and here he is talking to the press. Tottenham are unique in what they do and we felt we needed to change to give ourselves the best chance of implementing what we wanted to do and also we're looking at the balance of the players we have available trying to get them in their best positions um, to to play well so it was a combination of a lot of different things I thought tactically it worked I thought it was a, a really good delivery from the players they're always the ones that deserve the, ex the praise for the execution it's such a difficult thing to do when you're playing against elite players you know if you're man for man one mistake can can cost you but our concentration levels were really good. Yeah, this season, Fabian, we've need, really needed him. You know, around him, he's lost some big partners to injury, but he's been the sort of consistent in the team, and he's he's been incredible on the ball. I mean, I know Fabi will sort of pride himself on that, but then when you add, it's no good being on the, good on the ball if defensively you're not at the highest level, and he has. And I think that's the area of, the, of his game that he deserves the biggest credit for. He's been diligent, his uh, positioning's been excellent, his attitude to defending's been excellent, and he deserves a lot of credit for his performances this season. Well, yeah, who knows? I mean, I, I think we just got to keep doing our bit, which is trying to win every game. Um, and I think, look, looking at how we performed today, you go, we're returning hopefully to somewhere near our best. I don't want to, you know, say that for sure, but that, that, that's big steps forward in the last few weeks, and we've got to keep uh, aiming in that direction. And we are back. Um, I want to talk about Elliot Anderson in this part because I think he was absolutely outstanding. Is I thought, he? I thought you were going to talk with ticket prices. There. I was <laughs> no. like, thank God for that. Um, he is different in terms of the midfield. What we've got, we haven't got a Joe Will, we haven't got a Joe Linton. Tonali will be back soon, next season. Elliot Anderson 
if he stays fit, stays in the team because he, he, he offers something different. He was a rash all afternoon to that Tottenham midfield in particular. I think that was his most mature performance. Not his best, but mature because defensively he was doing so much and I haven't really, not really seen much of that from Anderson, what he's capable of doing. It Obviously he was coming over to help the left side of our defence slash midfield, covering Harvey Barnes and what have you and I thought defensively he was outstanding and by the way it's very hard to, to actually see who's the difference between Barnes and Anderson from long distance. It's a bit like, remember Richie, back in the day when Richie was playing, it was like who's who but Elliot Anderson, mat mature, that's what I've described that and you know, the, you always thought of him as this left winger cutting in, but there's a centre midfield with all the injuries up up for grabs at the minute. And do you change the team? Because naturally, I think Tino will probably be coming if he's fully fit. And but apart from that, you know, there's people that are playing for the places, and Elliot Anderson is one of them. He's not a regular; he's an impact player. But uh, by God, he put a shift in the day. What a performance. Yeah, it was an exceptional performance. Oh, another player I want to single out because he does get a lot of criticism is Jacob Murphy. I thought he was outstanding again. Well, I say again, outstanding today. And I know it was a different sort of position. But do you think that suits Jacob Murphy, that particular yeah. position? He, gets, he has more... He's got, he's got more uh, time to express and make decisions. He only gave the ball away a couple of times, which is not bad for Jacob Murphy. No, I absolutely agree. I said to, to Chris, um, you know, albeit it was weird seeing him on the team sheet in that particular position, the fact that him and Gordon, or the opportunity for him and Gordon to link up and use the overlap, both of them able to trap back, both very quick, both capable of very good delivery. I, I loved it, absolutely loved it. I would love to see him there. I, you know, if the Trippier's season, Trippier next season, probably his last season at Newcastle United, people will laugh at this, but I think, having, and I know we need to, to upgrade on players to compete at a higher level, but next season, having the likes of Jacob Murphy cement into that sort of position, I'd be okay with it, 100%. 100%. Now, this is your updated Premier League table. We do not know what the three o'clock scores were. We don't even know what Manchester United's result at Bournemouth was. But here it is. At the minute, as we are recording, we are sixth in the Premier League. We are a point ahead of Manchester United. Manchester United are close by. We've kind of gone away from your Brightons and your Wolves. Chelsea are kind of hovering around because they have got, obviously, a couple of games in hand. But it, it looks a lot more promising. And the Europa League is now more of an opportunity, maybe more than the Conference League, which is nice to say take any one of them to be honest with you but it was only literally four games ago people writing off the season in the comments on our YouTube videos saying the season's over it's done there's nothing to play for injuries have ruined it so even some people I don't know they were Newcastle fans might want any how out but look at 10 points in the last four games and again another clean sheet again because that's been poor by Newcastle this season the amount of goals that we've conceded the clean sheet again I, I like them and you know, me and Sam were echoing, stop, stop saying the season's over, it's not, it was just some, something to play for, look at it now, we're right in the mix now, and uh, obviously we were just all, well I was hoping they did, get a point the day, you know, keep that momentum going, keep the unbeaten run going, because I honestly thought Spurs would rip were apart the day with that lineup. and again, and Eddie Howe doesn't get enough uh, praise because they're all, you know, and this, and that, look what he's done today, he's absolutely surprised everybody, he deserves all the credit today, and I think he's got his substitutions well as well, at the right time and changing it and he knew the game was going to switch and the momentum would switch and Spurs would change it. I think you got everything spot on today and credit Eddie Howe because I'm a champion of Eddie Howe and a long time admirer of him and I think if we're in the mix that's, that's what Ole can ask and hopefully, hopefully, touch wood, we'll get some injuries back. Yeah, that would be lovely and just finally before we wrap things up, Carl, 10 days until the next game against Crystal Palace on a Wednesday night and then Sheffield United two weeks today. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? The fact that we've got 10 days, obviously one side of it, one side of the coin allows a few players to get back in the squad. Bad thing, we've just beaten Spurs from a real high. How do you see it? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to have a, a quick game, quick succession with and carry on this momentum, if I'm honest. Um, but like you say, it's two sides of the coin with regards to getting players back. I, I would prefer if we had a game um, in a, a lot shorter amount of time than that, personally. But I'm sure we're capable of going to beat Palace away, you'd like to say. Although our away record has been terrible, um, yeah, it's one of them, mate. We, we've got more than enough to beat them, but I wish it was. I wish it was sooner. Man of the match today, Elliot Anderson. Man of the match today. Oh, that's so tough because there's so many good ones. Well, they said Elliot Anderson. No, I'm gonna go on Isaac. I think he's just he's on a rich purple patch at the minute. He's scoring goals for fun. He's getting like linked to their their arch rivals Arsenal, and I don't mind that. It tells you that the players doing well, and. 130 million then we can at least have a conversation. 
I don't really want to entertain that because I think we need another. Yeah. I think we need another striker in because uh, of Wilson's injuries. But I've got to give it to Isaac. But notable mentions to Anderson, Gordon, and Fabian Chair. Dan Byrne deserves an honourable mention. Emil Kraft deserves an honourable mention. The whole team deserves an honourable mention. I'm going to go with Elliot Anderson as well because I did say that in the match reaction as well. Massive day tomorrow for Newcastle United women. If they win against Huddersfield Town at Kingston Park, Ooh. they will be champions promoted the, to the championship. All the billboards over there. Oh, the billboards are there. Support the lasses. All the matches will be at Kingston Park. And yeah, absolutely remarkable back-to-back -back promotions on the cards for Becky Langley's side. Only a win will be enough because Burnley did beat uh, Burnley won against it, um, Stoke City maybe on the, in the no, week. You, were, you I know, I was, it was Halifax, I tell a lie, it was Halifax, I was trying to remember what it was. But yeah, so Burnley have made sure that Newcastle ha United have to earn it. They take on Huddersfield, all the best to Becky and the girls, hopefully they'll get the job done, I'm sure. We'll be there. They will, me and you will definitely be there, 100%. Yeah, there's, there's me, you, Dale, Joe, we've got loads of stuff. I don't know how it's going to go down, maybe there's different videos, fake interviews, maybe there's a vlog, maybe there's just a celebration video lifting the trophy. Stay tuned tomorrow night. Yeah one not to be missed. Well, I'll tell you what, the weekend's only just begun and what a way it is started. Newcastle United victorious here at St James's Park. They have beaten Tottenham by four goals to nil. Have a great weekend. Best of luck to the lasses and we'll see you all very soon.